I am one of the four million South Africans with hearing loss. And for many of us, we culture identify as deaf. Deaf is a capital D, that is, because we are a community of people who share South African sign language as our first language. And for many of us, it's our mother tongue. The deaf community has been lobbying for many decades to have South African sign language, SASL, formally recognized and added to South Africans' proud and teaming list of languages, and we are getting closer to achieving this goal. So why should we care about sign language? Well, it should be an obvious answer, but the most important question is why should all South Africans care about sign language? I aim to simplify it in this talk because it's complicated. The word future, and who is the future? Children, of course. And in this talk, I will focus on deaf children. So we, as a deaf community, are now concerned because we can see that deaf education has reached a tipping point and is now a serious situation. But before I get too serious, let me tell you a bit about myself. I'm quite fun, you know. My name is Jessica, and this is my TED Talk. I am profoundly deaf in both ears, and I come from a largely deaf family, with deafness running three generations. My parents are deaf, and my home language is South African Sign Language. I learned to speak verbally when I got my hearing aids for the first time at three years old. For me, being deaf is normal. I just speak a visual language and experience life a little differently from those you can hear. So, let's start at the beginning of a deaf child's life. A snapshot of parents sitting in the doctor's room, hearing the news that their child is deaf. The usual reaction is embarrassment, a sense of loss, confusion. It's a natural response. Because parents are hoping for what society considers a healthy or normal child. So we can understand that. What happens next determines the child's future. Out of all the children born deaf, 90% of in families with no prior history of deafness in South Africa the average age a child is diagnosed with deafness is between 12 to 18 months old. This is because it takes time for the parents to recognize the child is not responding to noise or not speaking yet. On average, the first time a deaf child learns language is between 4 to 6 years old. A typical child starts learning from birth as they hear the conversations around them, but also they try to verbalize and have conversations with their family. But for a deaf child, language development and acquisition is a challenge because most home languages are verbal or auditory. For the child to develop well in all aspects of his life, it needs language development. Language development is the foundation on which all learning and other development needs to be built on. Multiple researchers agree language development helps children's cognitive and communication abilities, but also nurtures their emotional and mental well-being. But now, remove the typical and expected auditory and verbal norms and imagine that you are a deaf child. You are in an unfamiliar environment with no means to convey engagement or understanding. You are completely lost and frustrated. Imagine not having the ability to express yourself or your needs. This is what thousands of deaf children experience daily. While we know the responsibility falls on the parents to assist their deaf children, but most of the decisions are based on the resources and information available by a support structure that includes audiologists and speech therapists. So while this may be useful, there is one important thing missing, sign language. 
From the deaf community's perspective, we feel that there are contradictions to the way the sign language is marketed to parents. On one hand, you have baby sign language for little ones you can hear, and parents see the benefits of being able to communicate and use a bonding tool with their babies and families. But parents with deaf children don't realize that they can use sign language for their child to develop their vocab and communication skills. There is a harmful myth that has been perpetuated for more than a century, and this myth has impacted their development and access to sign language. This myth had people believing that if deaf children were taught sign language, and you had typical children you could hear or speak, they believed that they would never reach the same cognitive and linguistic ability. So this myth meant in an education setting, sign language was banned, and many medical practitioners discouraged parents from using sign language. However, a variety of research emerged from international psychologists and childhood development specialists proving that deaf children benefit exponentially from exposure to sign language from as young as six months old. In fact, with exposure to sign language, they experience the same typical neurological development as children who learn auditory and verbal languages. This is great news because there is absolutely nothing wrong in teaching deaf babies and children sign language. There are incredible benefits to it, so much that it should not just be highly recommended but mandated everywhere. Sign language should be the very first thing we begin using for our deaf babies and toddlers. Given its visual and kinetic nature, it is an ideal tool to build relationships between deaf children and their families and also helps them to adjust to the environment like any child does. This adjustment and acceptance of deaf children is important. Being wholly embraced as a person, no matter your ability, and given the best opportunities. I interviewed a cohort of teachers who work in the deaf schools and they explained to me that most deaf children who begin grade R or grade 1 in the deaf schools, they see the deaf children haven't yet acquired language skills. In mainstream schools, we know at that age they can express stories, name animals, colours, places, and all the fun stuff kids verbalise. But the teachers in the deaf schools do not see that from the children they teach. Instead, they are unable to form sentences or tell you what they did yesterday. It also impacts their emotional expression and their interpersonal skills with their peers, but also their ability to follow instructions in the classrooms. Teachers try their best to introduce sign language plus one other verbal language as much as possible when they are six or seven years old and this language gap is not easily remedied. So now we see why this language gap is important. I want to show you a comparison between the list of subjects in offer in mainstream schools and in deaf schools. So as you can see, there is quite a difference in subject offerings. For most deaf schools, important subjects like physical sciences biology, mathematics, accounting, geography and history, and one additional South African sign language are absent from the syllabus. But also many school leavers aren't even aware of the possibilities of these subjects. In fact, in South Africa, only 20% of deaf school leavers have grade 12. Also, in mainstream schools, you are required to do at least seven subjects, but in deaf schools, students only do five subjects. So why is there a difference? So, if we consider this four-year gap in critical language development in deaf children, we see now it has not been recognised as a serious issue. And we see that this delay has led to a systematic and educational belief that deaf children are not able to cope or do not have the capacity to do certain subjects. 
The right to basic education is not up for discussion. It's a right. But for the deaf community, the quality of education forces us to advocate for our children's future. For every deaf child to become an independent, employed, and active South African citizen, we need to ensure that they are empowered with all the resources and opportunities and sign language to achieve it. It is without a doubt that it takes a village to raise a child, but that means that that village can't be divided. We know we have the support structures already present in our communities, such as parents and families with deaf children, along with the deaf community, we can work together to learn sign language and make sure it's implemented widely. So this sense of responsibility is bigger than just the deaf community. All South Africans should be concerned because it's an important part for our future. We are experiencing the social and economic pitfall of previous failures. That means the future cannot be left behind to chance or luck that some will get it and others won't because nobody should be left behind. Deaf children, like all children, are an important part of our future. Their development and success is dependent on sign language. Sign language is a critical tool we can use in the education to help us arrive to that future. For the deaf community, sign language is the hope for our children's future. We as a deaf community have been advocating from a position easily silenced. It simply cannot continue. We need all South Africans to be involved, to take a hands-on approach, to support the deaf community in having their voices heard for our children's future. This means that every citizen, government organisation and education institution has to be involved in making sure we take up this responsibility for our children's future. It's a handy language. Now that you've heard the truth, how will you handle it?